right, so I promised you guys update videos, and here they are. So as you can see, the machine has changed a lot. Right now I'm working on the VFD enclosure. And as you can see, a lot of things have changed about the router. So we now have an ATC spindle. I even set up a little temporary tool rack, and I did configure my M6 macro to work with that. I won't be showing it in this video, there's still a few bugs to tweak, but um, in this video I want to go over more of the uh, electronics and ancillary components that allow this spindle to work. So the spindle itself is a JGL 801.5 R24-20, so it's an 80mm outer diameter spindle, 1.5 kilowatts of power. 24,000 RPM and ISO 20 for the taper for the tool holders. So it takes three air lines that are six millimeter push. Uh, the middle one is for the actual piston for the drawbar. And then the other two lines, um, one is the um, tool holder blow off. So when the drawbar claw is opened, air blows around it to clean off the tool holder taper. And the other one is more of a general uh, de-duster. It blows dust around the spindle itself and tries to keep as many of the chips and dust away from accumulating on the surface so that it doesn't break free, get on the tool holders and things like that. So the biggest issue right now that I'm having is the tools get dirty with chips and I have to really up the PSI to try to even that it still doesn't re reliably get all the chips off so I'm still waiting on my linear rails and uh, piston cylinder assembly to come in and I'll be making my own um, pneumatically actuated tool holder basically the uh, when the spindle comes back to get a new tool it'll pneumatically move forward with about a hundred millimeter stroke um, it'll clamp over the previous tool, spin will go up, grab a new tool, and then it'll retract back. And I'll have some sort of a acrylic flap to try to at least cover up the uh, tool holders themselves. So I did have to upgrade the drag chain. The original one was 18 millimeters by 25. The new one is 18 by 37, I believe. Yeah, 18 by 37. So for the water cooling tubing, uh, the spindle required eight millimeter OD, but 5 16 is pretty much the same size. This is of course my air assist, and I'm using it as an air assist right now. I've been, experiment I've been experimenting with an olive oil kerosene mixture, but um, it's much messier than I remember working with that. And in addition to that, it's not, uh, the Venturi effect or the vacuum effect of the misting system does eventually pull the, uh, coolant all the way through to the nozzle, but it does take quite a bit of time and I don't get any coolant being sprayed for about a few minutes. And then when I want to minimize the flow, because this produces a strong mist. When I want to minimize the flow, what ends up happening is when I turn the, uh, when I turn the air assist on with the coolant, it barely, it doesn't want to pull it at all. So the first thing I need to do is I need to mount this higher. And the second thing is I want to play with ethanol or cool mist and also pressurized the, um, coolant tank itself. In addition to that, I do plan on adding a solenoid on this end as close to the nozzle as I can to try to make things more reliable. So here we have the water cooling loop for all you PC water coolers out there. This is going to look very familiar. So 240 millimeter radiator, cylindrical water reservoir, and a Liang D5 pump. I originally had a Chinese SC600. Uh, which is a great value, but it did not have the head pressure or the flow rate that the spindle documentation required as a minimum. Uh, this D5 does a much better job. 
give you an idea of what the flow looks like. And unfortunately, it is very restrictive. This is very small ID tubing. It's only 3 16 And the spindle itself is also very restrictive. Uh, another thing about the water cooling is I actually had a leak. So as you can see, the piston assembly itself is basically made from a few layers of cylindrical aluminum. And there's O-rings sealing all the air and water lines. And I had a leak at this seal. Basically, the factory didn't properly install an O-ring. It was pinched. I did have a replacement on hand. So, not a good sign that they didn't leak test the spindle or a pressure test or anything like that, but... Um, I wish I had the VFD hooked up to show. But other than that, the run out on the spindle is fantastic. It's much quieter. These are the tool holders. These are Taiwan Parfait brand that JGL, or Jankin Tech, is the company that produces the JGL line of spindles, which are their ATC spindles. But this is a Taiwan Parfait tool holder. Um, these are specced to G2.5 at 30,000 RPM. And the company makes some really impressive tooling, so I'm more inclined to believe their specs, especially at the price that I paid for this, which was a little over 100 bucks. Um, yeah, ISO 20, ER16. I have, however, been testing. So runout is great on these, and I'm using Maritool um, collets. But I've also been playing with these much cheaper tool holders that are basically a generic version. And as you can see, they even laser engrave the same spec on them. Uh, runout was just a hair bit worse on these, but even with very small diameter tooling, it should not be an issue and these you could get for like 20 bucks shipped from china or less than 30 domestically shipped on amazon prime so and i do also use maritool tool holders for these um iso 20 does also come in er20 so this is the pneumatic system so uh, my air compressor is uh, one of those uh, silent oil-free types and I will be upgrading it because this system does consume a lot of air. But basically what we have here is I have kind of a last stage water filter to try to get the last drops of air. I did also have an inline desiccant filter in here but um, I decided to move that back closer to the compressor and get a bigger one as well. So. After that, we have, and by the way, this is a Pneumatic Plus, I believe, is the company that sells these. I really enjoy the quality of their air equipment. So this is a SMC panel mount shutoff switch. Um, eventually, this will be in its own enclosure. That's why this is panel mount. I also bought an SMC uh, air pressure gauge to see the pressure of the air coming into this system. After that, it hits this Festo um, four gang pressure regulator manifold block assembly. Uh, this is great. Basically, the all the regulators are independent from each other. So this could be a 20 PSI, this could be a 90, it doesn't matter. And then at the back of them, it has the quarter inch MPT to a right angle eight millimeter push. And it goes to this bank of three solenoids. There are 12 inch, uh, Three, three port two way. This is for the piston, for the drawbar itself. This is for the air that blows around the drawbar to clean off the tool holders. And this is my M7 air assist, I believe. And this is that continuous amount of air that gets blown um, around the spindle, keeping it clean. And this one isn't hooked up to a solenoid yet. I will eventually try to wire it up somehow to my controller so that when the spindle receives an M3, this solenoid will open up as well. So I'm figuring that out. And I guess I'll have to add another solenoid for the, um, or two solenoids, one to pressure the, pressurize the coolant tank, which will obviously uh, be a different one than this one. I just assembled this with stuff I laying around. And then another solenoid for, of course, the coolant line itself. Oh, 
and then another solenoid for the pneumatic tool changer tool rack so let's see if I can find the key so this is the main electronics enclosure as you can see I added an illuminated LED switch let's try to move this machine back without breaking anything once again, I do apologize for the mess. It is not easy. Basically, you're redoing your whole CNC. So, you guys have seen this before in part one. A few things have changed. So, first of all, my EMI filter was not properly wired. Um, as soon as the power goes in, it now goes straight to the breaker, and then it goes to everything else. So, the EMI was actually wired in before the breaker, and since it's 10 amp rated, it was basically unprotected. And so I've since resolved that. Another thing I want to show is um, these little boards. These are RJ45 breakouts. So basically they'll let you use a normal ethernet cable, uh, a, a decent quality one, try to get like a 23 or a 24 gauge. Um, but this is basically for just low voltage signal wires. Um, so basically it just breaks out the eight wire strands inside of it as well as even a connection for the shielding and this is for my solenoid controls so i'm utilizing these three relays for the three solenoids i currently have available eventually i'll have to add my own relays and use the output wiring from the uc300 i also have my two probes wired in here and I did buy um, a much better fixed probe that's on its way here that I'll show you guys. But yeah, so the ethernet cable, which of course will be replaced once everything is all enclosed and in a more permanent location. And then I have the same one here. And this is all temporary. This is just for testing and for putting together my macro. And so it's here and then um, ground and I believe voltage positive 12 volts DC 12 volts is split between all of them and then the relays basically just uh, connect that to ground or uh, neutral or voltage negative or whatever it is it's to activate the solenoids so so there's plenty of room here to uh, install the air cylinder and the uh, linear linear guides which I bought um, 15 millimeter by 200 millimeter um, basically high wind knockoffs because I paid way too little for them to be authentic high winds so this is the VFD enclosure the uh, I did get this VFD working with Modbus using the Modbus easy plugin so um, I forgot I forgot the gentleman's name but I really do appreciate his work for putting the plugin together and made it very easy. So this is the VFD that came with my spindle. It's a Symphenix E55 E550. And this takes the same settings as um, uh, the Sunfar brand of VFDs if uh, you guys are trying to get Modbus to work. So um, power in is going to go through here through a NEMA L1420 which I actually just wired up. And then the connectors here. So it's gonna go power in straight to the breaker. Um, and then I'm gonna have some terminal blocks for like the neutral and the ground. Well, the ground is actually gonna be a star point grounding setup in this enclosure. And then um, I'm gonna have a DC power supply for a fan that's gonna be built into here. Uh, same fan configuration as in the electronics enclosure, one of these deltas. And so um, this is the contactor. It is a, basically it's a, the cheapest thing I could find. Um, eventually I'll get a proper contactor that takes a DC signal input, but this is just going to take 110 volt from the main electronics enclosure. Uh, my thought process was that since this is going to be a very a noisy area with lots of EMI. I didn't want to feed it a DC signal wire, so I would rather feed it a 110 from the enclosure, which then goes through the EMI filter and everything. So 
So we have a Allen Bradley breaker, contactor, um, mean well 12 volt that's gonna go in, and then I'm gonna buy some proper color Dinko terminal blocks for this. Here we have a, um, a decent quality and very large EMI filter. So this is like a, like a three stage filter or something like that. I think it'll get the job done for the power in going to the VFD. And then I still have to buy a few connectors and things like that. But um, yeah, making progress on this. And this is the ferrite, which I'm going to reuse from the previous um, electronics that came with my 6040. And uh, yeah, still waiting on a lot of parts, still have a lot of progress to make, but um, I did actually mill a few parts and the performance was great. Uh, again, the Basically, uh, as soon as you hit cycle start, it's hands-free. Of course, you still have to uh, do uh, offsets, but I did um, program this as a temporary fix tool probe. It's, it's basically a precision 90 degree that I drilled and tapped, but it was getting the job done. So, so yeah, um, I milled a few parts, and besides having to keep the two holders clean, blowing off the chips occasionally, other than that, um, absolutely no intervention required, which is a great feeling. So, I guess some details on the macro. Uh, the M31 macro, which is the uh, offset probe for the Z, uh, works in conjunction with the M6 macro. So the way the macros work is, I first run, after homing the machine and having my work workpiece set up, I uh, run my M31 macro, which basically does a uh, dual touch on this little probe, and then it goes over to the fixed probe, probes that twice, and it measures the offset distance between the two, and saves, uh, saves them in the DRO for the C-axis, I believe. Um, not my idea, it's someone else's entirely. And basically after that, the only thing I have to do is after I do an M6, so from tool one to tool two, it just touches off the fixed probe, uh, gets the new zero, and then it applies that offset from the C-axis DRO and goes back to milling the workpiece. Uh, I do have a new vice coming in. I have a lot of stuff coming in, so yeah, expect more videos from me, and thanks for watching.